Yes. Well, you doing all this graphing? You like graphing? All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to look at now. Um, so we've talked about end behavior. We talked about zeros. And um, then we also talked about degree, depending on how many zeros we had. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do the same thing. We're going to get a little bit more detailed um, into our graph. The first thing, I want you kind of taking notes of this graph. We know that the end behavior, as my graph goes to the left, it goes way down to infinity, right? And then as it goes to the right, it goes way up to positive infinity. But besides going up to positive infinity and to negative infinity, there's some other maximum and minimums we're going to discuss. So what you look at is as my graph is in increasing and then the slope goes down to decreasing, what we create is kind of a little top edge, a little maximum, right? And that occurs now also right here. As my graph increases but then turns to de decreasing, that's another little maximum. It's not the absolute maximum of the graph, but what they're called is these are what we call our relative max maximums. So the relative max is going to be when your graph is going to has a slope of that is increasing and then turns down to decreasing. Goes up to decrease. Yeah, and you can kind of see like this is like a kind of a maximum point, right? These are like kind of little maximum points of the graph. Then we'll talk about relative minimums. So a relative minimum is going to be kind of like the exact same or the exact opposite. Now, as my graph is decreasing but then turns to go and increasing, you can say of this kind of little polynomial, we kind of have two little relative minimal terms. So these are what we call your relative min. Okay. Now, one thing I noticed, one, or one vocabulary word I kind of said is, as the slope kind of is increasing and then it kind of turns to going down, or if it's going down and then it kind of turns going up. So these are what we kind of call, we call them our relative min and max, but we're also what we call our turning points. Okay? And turning points are very, good, are very, very helpful to help us actually find the exact or not the exact, but at least the minimal degree that our polynomial can have. So if we have a, if we have a polynomial, so we, if we have a polynomial with degree n, I don't know, n could be 5, n could be 4, n could be 3, 2, whatever n is. Is like if we know that the poly, if we can determine what the polynomial degree is, right? We look at the function and we say, okay, all right, the degree is at this amount. If we know what the degree is, the number of turning points, n minus one turning points. Okay. So therefore, if I have a polynomial with degree four. How many turning points is it going to have? And 4 minus 1 is 3. If I have a polynomial with um, you know, 2 turning, or degree 2, it's going to have 1 turning point. OK? So when looking at the, you know, the minimal degree of this polynomial, first of all, all right, so then the next part, so we found the relative max, we found the turning points. Now what we're going to do is let's just go ahead and determine so the three kind of points we're going to do is, um, first of all, estimate, the, uh, estimate our um, turning points and determine if there are a min or a max. So we have our first turning point at x equals negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So we could say our turning points would be at x equals negative 4. And is this a relative min or max? That's obviously a max, right? We have x equals negative 1. That's going to be a minimal a relative min. We have x equals uh, 1, 2. Looks like it's in between 2 and 3. So I'll just do 2.5. We're going to estimate. Um, so we have 2.5, and that's a max. And then we have another minimum point at x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's a minimum. So what we're going to learn how to do is just kind of estimate what their maximum and mins are, and that are the turning points. Estimate the x-coordinate of the turning point, 
and then determine if it's a max or a min. All right? The next thing is we need to do is kind of estimate our zeros. Because now I kind of give you an axis with coordinates. Now let's estimate the zeros. So we have a zero here, 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 and that's it. So we could say x equals negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. x equals negative 2. And x equals 0. So for b, we want to estimate the number of zeros. And then for number 3, we want to um, determine the smallest possible degree of the function. I'm sorry, we're the, we have not number 3, we have one more. So the degree of the function c. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how many turning points do we have? How many turning points do we have? 1, 2, 3, I'm going 4. Sure, yeah, absolutely. So we have one, two, three, four turning points, correct? You guys can just go around in the back. Um, so we have four turning points. So ladies and gentlemen, if I have a degree n, and if n minus 1 is the number of turning points, and I have now n turning points, or if I have four turning points, what do you think the smallest degree is going to be? For it possible to be? Zero. Well, I'll put it to you this way. If I have a degree, if I have a degree of 5, Right? How many turning points is it going to have? Four. Four. So now if I say I have, or I just gave you the answer. Now if I say my four. turning points is, f no. If I say the number of turning points is four, what is the degree? Three. Five. Five. You're going to work backwards. You're adding one. The number of turning points, add one to give you your smallest degree. So therefore, you can say the degree. Because I'm giving you the number of turning points. I'm giving you n minus 1. So to find n, you got to add 1. I'm giving you the number of turning points. The zeros was just another, it was just another question. The, the zeros didn't have anything to do with our turning points. Okay. Then the last thing that we need to go over is finding out our domain and range. So, when looking at the domain and range, all right, remember the domain, ladies and gentlemen, the domain is going to be the set of all x values that are, that are a part of our graph on the x-axis. So let's look at the end behavior. As my graph is going to the left, right, as my graph is going to the left, is it really hitting every single x value? No. Yeah. Oh, no, it's a continuous graph, right? There's an x value for every single point. And as this graph is going to keep on going down, I can keep on going right, it's going to keep on going farther down. This graph is going to hit every single x value. Every single x value imaginable is on this graph. It's a continuous graph going in the negative and the positive direction. So your domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Because you can go negative infinity all the way to infinity, and each, every x value is going to be a part of your graph. Now let's look at the range. On the range, we're looking at the y coordinates now. And you can see, as I'm going up, every single part of my graph has a coordinate for the, on the, as a y coordinate part of its graph. So the range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, as a graph goes down, and then as a graph goes up. Every single part is going to be part of the infinity. Yes? Sit down. 